Hey, what is up you guys? I am sitting here chilling on my bed because um, my desk is a horrible mess over there. And I got a package from Grihaz Gear that I wanted to open on camera for all of you guys to see because I only ordered two pieces from him. This feels like more than two pieces. So just in case it's something cool, I wanted to open it on camera. So let's see what it is. All right, let's see how well I can unbox with one hand. Like I said, super fast bonus video. Oh my, this is large. This is, oh, okay. All right, so let's start with the stuff I actually ordered. Uh, so these are two um, Strife 180 covers that I ordered for two upcoming projects. Uh, but it sounds like there's even more in here too. So let me cut this open real quick. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. I highly doubt it. Nope. Be right back. All right. So I've now cut this open. So I've got one, two motor covers, really simple, really easy. Uh, and an extra keychain. That is really cool. A strafe keychain. Perfect. My favorite flyable blaster. Um, so I'm probably going to put that on my keys now. <laughs> And what's this? A business card. I love it when people send me business cards. I have a small collection of these from End War and NVZ the year before and ordering parts. Um, but yeah, these are really slick. I really like these. And oh, there's more. Uh, a long shot and a strife vinyl decal. Oh, I'll have to put these on my laptop. Alright, and baggy part two. One second. All right, cut that open. So let's see what's in here. Okay, neat. There's some Rapid Strike parts. Uh, what I have here is the flared magwell for the Rapid Strike, uh, which is really neat. Uh, definitely love myself some flared magwells for all kinds of um, gameplay. So this is exciting. This is for my upcoming Rapid Strike project. I'm glad it's white too. Um, if I was going to order one, which I was going to eventually, this is the color I would have wanted it in. Thank you for reading my mind, Grihas. Uh, I've also got a Rapid Strike 180 cover, uh, which is really cool. I'll have to find a project to use this on um, in the future. This is the heel for a Rapid Strike. That is really nice. Um, I know a lot of people prefer um, to... I know a lot of people like these heels because it sort of completes the handle and makes it more ergonomic. So I'll definitely be trying this on my Rapid Strike. Uh, along with a Rapid Strike mag release. I'm assuming that this is for the Rapid Strike considering it's with the Rapid Strike parts. Um, but I will tell you for sure once I try it out. What else we got? Uh, a Rapid Strike 180 cover. That looks nice. Definitely going to be using this in an upcoming build. And this looks like a strife. Actually, no, this looks like a rapid strike um, rev trigger. Interesting. It's ever so slightly different from the normal uh, rapid strike rev trigger, but I'd like it. I'm going to have to test it out against the stock one and see which one you know feels better and looks better. And a... Uh, I want to say this is a Bobololo style one, but it's a little bit more, it's even more um, expanded, I guess is the right word, than the Bobololo style rev trigger for the Strife that uh, Foam Blast made and sells. So that's really neat. And I like the, the translucent color. Um, we'll definitely have to put some LEDs in here. And, oh my, a Rapid Strike keychain. I don't know what to do with all these keychains, but that's really cool. Uh, so let's see what these parts look like on blasters. Okay, so fortunately or unfortunately, my only rapid strike in my house right now is this one that is completely empty. But that means we can put all the pieces on it without having to take too much apart. So I'm putting this back on because the heel that he provided goes directly over that. So here's the heel. You can see the inside grooves line up. And let's see how well this fits on. Wow, I can do that with one hand and that aligns almost perfectly. 
Uh, I'm assuming this is a prototype because I haven't actually seen this on this store, but I know he's been working on it. So if this is just the prototype, I cannot wait to see how the final version comes out. That is, that is very nearly, that's almost perfectly flush. I really like that. And this definitely feels more comfortable. Um, my only, my only uh, criticism of it, or rather not mine, because I can live with this, um, but I know there will be other criticisms of it, is that it does not split in half, which means that you, uh, for people like Nick Marvin, uh, who would like to integrate these directly into the shell, you cannot actually integrate into a shell. You can't. You wouldn't be able to fill in all these gaps with like epoxy, um, because then you would have to do it to both sides, and then you would have your shell stuck together forever. So that's a little bit of a downside, but it's not that big a deal. Uh, so now moving on to the flared magwell. Uh, so Jangular looked at this a little bit more in depth than I will, just because I'm sitting on my bed doing this quickly, but let's pop this open. Everything goes everywhere. And the way you install this is really simple. Boom, I just installed it. So if you don't know what I just did, it just replaces the magwell piece that's already in there, which is this, with that. And now close it back up and voila, you now have a flared magwell. Um, and it looks really nice. I like the little extra details here. Um, and the only other flared magwell on the market right now is Hawkeye 007s or Black Seal props, um, depending on where you find him. But the difference with his is that his, you have to epoxy or uh, DevCon onto the outside here. Whereas Grijas just goes inside and replaces a piece that's already in there. So I didn't have to do any gluing for this to work. It's in. As long as my blaster is screwed together, that is stably in. That's not going anywhere. Uh, whereas Hawkeyes, you have to attach to the outer portion of the shell. Uh, there's upsides and downsides to that. Like I said with the uh, heel, the downside is that it does not split in half. So um, you'd have to paint this separately. Uh, you can't like fill in any gaps. Not that there are any. This looks really flush with the the rapid strike itself. Uh, so that's really nice. Um, and what else did we get for the rapid strike? We got a mag release. So let's put that in there. I'm assuming this is for the rapid strike. Uh, this does seem to fit here. Yeah. This seems to be a Rapid Strike mag release. It um, it wouldn't fit a Strife because this would be angled slightly differently for a Strife. That's really cool. That's going in my next Rapid Strike project as well. And last but not least, let's compare some rev triggers. So this is the stock rev trigger. It goes right in there. Uh, and as you can see, it kind of disappears into the shell when you press it. Um, so there's this one, which is extremely extended. So when you press this one, you can still definitely feel it. It's still 100% outside the shell. And his other one, this one, I'm assuming goes this way. Actually, no, because the bump would be here. So this would go like this, which is interesting. So all the way back, it might also sink into the shell, but it's a little bit longer than the stock one. I wish I could show you this better. So it's a little bit longer than the stock one, but still, um, so it will still protrude from the shell once all the way pressed, which is something that a lot of people really like. So that's really nice. And last but not least on the rapid strike, we have this motor cover here which will just be glued directly onto it. Um, and this lines up pretty well with that. Um, so one criticism I would have for this is that uh, because this is completely flat, it's flat with this portion, not with this portion, which means that this is going to kind of hover over the gap here. It actually seems to be wide enough to go just touch the edges there, 
but it's still kind of hovering over it rather than filling this area. So I don't know if that's something that you necessarily have to fix, um, but something to keep in mind. And of course, last but not least, for the Rapid Strike, you have this cover, which um, it's kind of wobbly now, but you actually do have to, this is the area that you have to cut in order to put it on. So once you cut that away, this will fit on there really nicely. And as you can tell, it lines up with the top line up here and sinks up there really nicely. So this right here is the shell of a strife that I use for all my testing. And as you can see, it's got a giant hole cut out of it. Um, that hole is going to stay there because that way I can show off what motors I'm, I have in it and the cage and that sort of thing. But this goes on right over it and that fits so nicely. So as you can see, he took a slightly different approach when designing the Strife cover as he did with the Rapid Strike cover. And I don't know if that's just because of the differences in the Strife and Rapid Strike, but for the Strife cover, this goes all the way over the edges, so it fits on here perfectly. Like, you cannot mess this up because it wraps around all the edges. Whereas this one just sits right on top. And as you can see, it's not that hard to misalign it, so you have to hold it really steady when you're gluing it down. But this one, like, it's it's on there. I'm not touching it, and it's staying on. Um, not, like, permanently staying on, but it's not shifting around. So... Very interesting, they took two different design approaches. Um, this design approach is really nice for uh, people who are less patient, like me, or people who um, just don't take as much um, time with their work, where they just want to slap it on and it fits on perfectly. Whereas this design approach requires a little bit more patience and lining it up as perfectly as possible to fit that motor cover on there. Um, but yeah, that is all of the parts that Grijas sent me. Um, thank you so much, Grijas. I only ordered two of these and got all of this other stuff. Okay, I do have both of them. Um, but thank you very much. And uh, just one last look for you guys at the print quality. That is really nice. Um, my favorite 3D prints are the ones where you can't tell that they were 3D printed. And... Looking closely at this, you can, and when you feel it, you can definitely feel it's a 3D print, but from further away, you you can't really tell. That kind of, that blends in right there. Um, these ones with the larger air, surface areas on them, you can tell a little bit that they're 3D printed, but a little bit of sanding and painting will fix that right up. Um, the heel as well. But yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching, and thank you Grihaus for sending me all this extra stuff. Uh, definitely will be ordering from him in the future, as he's got a couple more products that I've seen some sneak peeks of that I am very excited for. So stay tuned for that next time I get a package from him. And uh, thank you all for watching. Grihaus' information will be in the description below. And uh, once again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Sick. 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 Sick.